They think we're out of the fight. We're going to go ahead, use our ultimate, and get back in the fight. Land on this Scylla. Throw out our taunt. We're able to clean her up with a basic attack. Now we're going to rotate towards the Camazots. Sung Kong's here. Get some damage onto him. Throw out the taunt. And we're able to get the pick onto the Sung Wukong. Kamazots is in mid, same with Ares. We're gonna throw out our taunt, or our one, and unfortunately we miss it. We're gonna turn our attention to the Ares. Throw out our taunt. We get two out of the three. We're gonna throw out our one, and we're able to clean up the Ares. That was kind of a soft triple kill. What a do, skibbity boo, it's your boy Shawnee B Gaming, and today we have a viewer request to play Broken Mink Broken Face, I mean Dance Bora and Mid. If you are new to the channel, I upload every single day. I add some commentary to a game that I've already played with the intention of seeing what went right, what went wrong, and hopefully there's something that we can learn together. If there is something that we learn together, make sure you check out the channel and subscribe for more content. If you are a returning viewer, Dansbora is really strong right now. In this video, I'm going to go over why I think he's super strong. This video, I feel like, was a little bit short compared to my other ones, but I feel like we just absolutely slapped. As always, the full build is in the description down below. So let's go ahead and jump into his kit. Dansbora's 1, Fool's Gold. Dansbora rolls out 3 money bags that pass through and damage enemy minions, but stop on enemy gods, slowing as they travel. Gods hit are damaged and intoxicated, dropping a gold coin that Danzabora or his allied gods can pick up that provide him 10 gold. When a money bag stops moving, it is revealed to be an explosive which detonates after a short delay. Subsequent hits of the money bag or explosions deal 20% of the damage. At level 1, the intoxicate duration is 0.6 seconds, and then at level 5, it is 1.4 seconds. Danzaboros 2, Alluring Spirits. Danzaboro takes a swig of his sake bottle, gaining health before hurling it in front of him to deal damage to enemies in the inner circle. The bottle of sake applies a stack to enemy gods in the area slowing them, and upon reaching 3 stacks, taunting them with no diminishing returns towards the sake bottle. Enemies that have taken more than 30% of their maximum health while taunted are going to be broken out early. The slow is going to be 10% for 1.5 seconds and can stack up to 3 times. The taunt duration is going to be 1 second. Danzaboro's 3, Tanuki Triggery. Danzaboro creates a field where he moves faster, is slow immune, and takes less damage from basic attacks. Enemies in the field are slowed by 20%. If Danzaboro leaves the field, it disappears, turning him into a leaf, among other decoys that mimic his movement. In this state, his movement speed is increased, he is still slow immune, and can pass through enemies. After a short delay from transforming any hit from an enemy god, or if Danzaboro attacks, he will revert back to his normal form. The movement speed he gains from standing in the circle is 10% at level 1, 20% at level 5. The leaf movement speed is 20% at level 1, 40% at level 5. And he takes 20% reduced basic attack damage. Danzaboro's ultimate, Uproarious Rocket. Danzaboro summons a magical leaf which transforms into a large bamboo rocket. While preparing, Danzaboro can aim the rocket within 180 degrees to lock onto an enemy god or he can refire this ability to become the rocket. Once fired, the rocket will pass through and damage enemy minions, stopping on the first enemy god hit, damaging and stunning them while dealing 50% of the damage in a large area. The stun duration is 1 second at level 1, 1.4 seconds at level 5. And finally, Danzabora's passive, Dubious Savings. Every time Danzabora actively gains gold, he stores 10% into one of his money pouches instead. When his pouch is completely filled, Danzabora gains bonus gold and a permanent physical power increase before switching to a larger money pouch. He's going to gain 10 bonus power per pouch. In terms of the leveling order, at level 1, we want to put a point to our 1. Level 2, put a point to our 2. Level 3, put a point to our 3. Then at level 4, we want to put another point to our 1. Level 5, put a point to our ultimate. We want to max out our ultimate whenever we can. Max out our 1, max out our 2, then max out our 3. In terms of the start, we went with tier 2 transcendence. 4 health potions and 2 mana potions. Danzabora can consume mana pretty quickly if you're using your 1 and your 2. You could get by with just your 1, but if you're trying to be aggressive, you want to throw out your 2. 
Also, when we're playing Danzabora in mid, we want to try to build a little bit of power and then kind of go more power than attack speed. We're gonna go ahead and rotate to our red buff. So, of Danzabora's abilities, his one seems very strong. I think this god is going to get nerfed as soon as the new season starts. They released him right at the time when they said that they weren't going to make any serious changes to the game, and this is because of the Smite World Championship, which is happening this week. Right there, we probably could have killed the Scylla if we threw our 1 right after hitting our ultimate instead of trying to hit the 2. We do have enough money for the tier 3 Transcendent, so we're going to pick up this red buff and then go ahead and back. My proposed changes and where I think Dan's Bora is really strong is his one seems to hit a little too hard, so I would recommend that they reduce the power scaling by 5 or 10%. The two, the taunt, is ridiculously strong. If you can land this, the enemy can lose up to half their health. I know that they get broken from the taunt whenever they lose 30% of their health, but I always feel like once they're taunted, they're almost always dead. So my proposed change is that it has to tick four times instead of three times. It should be a little harder to get the enemy to be taunted because the taunt is so good. I think Danes of Wars 3 is actually really balanced. I think it's a great ability, it's fun, it's cool, and it works. It works well on Danes of Aura. His ultimate only has a 90 second cooldown, which I think is a little bit ridiculous. I think it should be a longer cooldown and the power should be probably reduced a little bit. In this game, I'm pretty sure that we hit our ultimate, hit our one, and we kill somebody. And being able to kill somebody with two abilities is just a little too, too good. We have a very talky team this game. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. And still is able to turn that corner and get the rocket to hit the wall. If she was a little bit further in lane, that rocket would have locked onto her and then would have tracked her. Gamzots is on us. We're good though. We're under tower. We have health potions to heal back up. We're gonna go ahead and set up a ward in the left so we know if he's coming back to us. One thing I think that every Danzabora player should know is that whenever you are elite, you can pass through the enemy tower without being targeted by the tower. I am casting my one. That way, one of my side money bags is gonna hit the minion wave instead of the money bag in the middle. I think it just adds a little bit of chaos and it makes it harder for the enemy to predict where the money bags are going to go. If you're shooting right down the middle, it's kind of easy to predict, but if you're shooting from one of the sides, it's going to bounce off the wall and then you don't know where it's going. So the Ao Kuang, that is our jungler of this game, I actually played with him in an earlier game. It was a random queue and he's like, hey, Shawnee B, love your videos. And I was like, bet. So I added him as a smite friend and then played some games with him. If you ever do end up in a game with me, just let me know. You watch the videos, I'll be sure to add you. Right now, we're just working on stacking our transcendence. With Danzabora, I think his three and his passive are probably the only two balanced abilities on him. His ultimate super strong does too much damage, his one does a little too much damage, and his taunt is just ridiculously strong. We're gonna go ahead and rotate right. We have two levels on the Scylla just because we've been able to out poker. We rotate, but it doesn't really look like there's anything worth committing to, so we're gonna rotate back to mid. Enemy red buff is up, we're gonna go ahead and steal this. The enemy team is up two kills and up in gold. We're gonna go ahead and use our ultimate. Scylla uses her ultimate so she's CC immune, but the damage is ridiculous and we're able to clean her up with a basic attack. Ares is here, we kinda panic. We use our Aegis and our three. We should have saved our three for once we got pulled. We're gonna go ahead and cast our money bags. Trying to get some basics onto this Camazots. This Yumoja is very talkative. And it looks like she's upset with our jungler. We're gonna go ahead and clear the red buff with Yumoja. So 
so we got the tier 3 transcendence. We'll go over that in just a minute. I think we're going to be backing pretty soon because we have enough money for boots. And we're going to go ahead and back. Transcendence is going to provide us 35 power, 300 mana, and 10 MP5. It has a passive that you can stack up to 50 times. Each stack is going to provide you 15 mana. Once you have 50 stacks, it's going to also provide you 10% cooldown reduction. 3% of your mana is going to be converted into physical power. So we have, let's just call it... 1,500 mana. It's going to also provide us with 45 additional power. We're creeping up on 2,000, so we're about to have 60 additional power from our mana conversion. Ares is here. We're going to throw out our taunt. He's taunted. Land some basics, and we're able to get the pick onto Ares. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate. Land on the Scylla, throw out our one, and that's just ridiculous. She was full health, and we were able to melt her with our ultimate and our one. We do have three levels on her and a fully stacked transcendence, but I don't feel like any god should be able to do another god that dirty. We're going to rotate left. It's just Yamoja over here. We throw out our taunt. We get the taunt under the camera's off. We hit him with the money bag. We're going to pick up the money coins, get some additional gold. Kamazatsu is here, we're going to throw out our three, throw out our taunt, he's taunted. We have no basic attack penalty, we're going to get the one onto the Sun Wukong, hit him with the basic attack, and we're going to get a double kill over in solo lane. So whenever you hit an enemy with the one, he drops a gold coin, and in the description it says you get 10 gold but when you pick it up you actually only get 9 gold so i don't know if that's a bug or a typo in the description but something doesn't seem quite right there we are just short of enough money to get aussie so we're going to be a little bit greedy and try to clear mid lane again our red buff is also up so we're going to rotate there We're going to be super greedy and try to gank right lane. We're low on health, so this might bite us in the butt. Pretty poor place taunt. We're going to keep throwing our basics. We get taunted. We use our Aegis. Emoji puts up a great wall. We're going to turn into the leaf using our Tanuki trickery. We're going to be even more greedy. Come back in. Use our ultimate. This time we're going to hop in it. Hit the wall, and we're able to get the explosion damage onto the areas and get the pick onto him. With his ultimate, if you see a line whenever you cast, that means you're going to hop in the ultimate. If you do not see the line, that means you're going to shoot it and it's going to lock onto somebody. We're going to go ahead and pick up beads for our second relic, and then we're going to go into two health potions and two wards. Right now we are having an excellent game, 6-0-1, 13, level 13, at 12 minutes into the game. Go ahead, clear the harpy, get a little farm where we can. We're gonna throw out our two. Almost get the pick on Scylla from our one damage. We have Aussie online. Aussie is gonna provide us 20 physical power, 20% lifesteal, 25% attack speed, and 15 flat penetration. It has a passive that if you fall below 35% health, you're going to gain an additional 30% lifesteal for five seconds. This can only occur once every 15 seconds. So the Transcendence Aussie combination is a pretty strong one. You have a lot of power, so you're going to get a lot of value out of the lifesteal. The 15 flat penetration is also very helpful this early on in the game. So right now, let's say we have 50 physical protections. 
we're gonna be dealing damage to an enemy that has 50 physical protections as if they had 35 physical protections we get the ultimate we should be able to clean up the areas with our basic attack still is still here we're gonna throw out our one unfortunately we do not connect get a little bit of poke onto the tower We're just going to hold mid, make it look like we're backing to see if we can get Scylla to step up. We're going to go ahead and rotate left. Game is here, we're going to throw out our one. We're able to clean him up, Sung Wukong's here. We're going to throw out our taunt. He gets taunted back in, so he's dead. Our team makes the call to go for Fire Giant. Pretty early on in the game to go for it. But we're going to go ahead and go for it. We do not gain attack speed or physical power from our 3. So there's no real point in placing it when attacking the objective. We lose 2 to the Fire Giant. Almost 3. But we're able to secure it. Al Kwong says bad call, and I kind of agree with him. We lost two people. Red's almost up, so we're going to go ahead and make a play for that. There's that slow sensitivity for you. Kamazots was able to run a circle around us when we tried to cast our one. Ares is here. We miss our taunt. We do have our ultimate. Trying to see if we can hold on to it. Sun Wukong's here. We're going to throw out our taunt. Use our Tanuki Chicory. Which I really like this ability. It's a really cool ability. They think we're out of the fight. We're going to go ahead and use our ultimate and get back in the fight. Land on this Scylla. Throw out our taunt. We're able to clean her up with a basic attack. Now we're going to rotate towards the Kamazots. Sun Kong's here. Get some damage onto him. Throw out the taunt. And we're able to get the pick onto the Sun Kong. Kamazots is in mid, same with Ares. We're going to throw out our taunt, or our one, and unfortunately we miss it. We're going to turn our attention to the Ares. Throw out our taunt. We get two out of the three. We're going to throw out our one, and we're able to clean up the Ares. That was kind of a soft triple kill. Unfortunately, it was not a real triple kill. We have a pretty penny in the pocket, so we are going to need it back here in just a moment. Another thing on his ultimate, I feel like the range is a little too far. I'd say knock off about 20% of the range and it should be a little bit more balanced. So my suggested changes to balance this god, reduce the power scaling on his one, Make the taunt have to hit you four times to taunt because it's such a strong ability. And then the ultimate, reduce the power and reduce the travel distance. I think the passive and the three are pretty balanced. We're going to go ahead and pick up Fail Knot. Fail Knot is going to provide us 40 physical power or 45 physical power, 20% critical strike chance, 20% cooldown, and 10% penetration. It has a passive that when your ultimate ability has finished casting, your next ability or basic attack within 8 seconds that damages an enemy god marks them, increasing the chance you and your allies have to land a critical strike by 15% for 10 seconds. This can only occur once every 45 seconds. The passive is pretty good, but we're really getting this item for the stats. Power, crit chance, cooldown, and percent penetration It's a very, very strong item. We do have our ultimate. Blast off. I'm going to go straight for the Kamazots. 
I don't know how we didn't hit that tower. We're going to back out so we're not taking tower aggro. We're just going to focus the tower while the fight's going on. Throw out the taunt. After going into Fail Knot, we're going to go into Atalanta's Bow. And once again, the full build is in the description down below. We're going to get some pressure and the enemy team surrenders. Can't say that I blame them. Well, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. That really helps these videos out. If you feel like you learned anything at all, check out the channel and subscribe for more content. These stats for this game will be posted in just a moment. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you have a great day. I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.